Bernie Sanders spoke at the J Street National Conference. Uh, J Street is a Jewish group fighting for peace in the Middle East. And here's what Bernie said. There is no question that we should be and will be Israel's very strong friend and partner in years to come. But we also need to recognize uh, that the Israeli occupation runs contrary to American values and I believe Israeli values as well. We can oppose the policies of President Trump without being anti-American. We can oppose the policies of Netanyahu without being anti-Israel. We can oppose the policies of Islamic extremists without being anti-Muslim. Peace means security not only for every Israeli, but also every Palestinian. Those of us who support Israel have got to tell the truth about policies that hurt the chances of a peaceful resolution. We need to end this 50-year-long occupation. Yeah. Every word of that is spot on. Every word of that. So there's this uh, gross trick that people have been using recently. I feel like this is a modern phenomenon where, for example, if you criticize Islamic extremism, like I criticize Saudi Arabia, for example, because they're ISIS that made it. They have a Wahhabi ideology. Women are second-class citizens. They're not allowed to drive. They behead people in the public square for sorcery and witchcraft and apostasy. They say all atheists are terrorists. So they're just a horrific terror state. But when you criticize them, some people say, oh, it's Islamophobic. What? No, you're criticizing Islamic extremism in that instance. You criticize the Syrian rebels, who a study found over half of them, about 60% of them, are extremists. So they're jihadists, many of them officially aligned with Al-Qaeda. And you, oh, that's Islamophobic. Wait, what? That's crazy. That's a trick. It's a trick. You're saying legitimate criticism equals bigotry. And that's to try to silence any criticism. Now, by the same token, it happens in Israel as well. You criticize Netanyahu, the right-wing Likud government. You criticize his bomb fest in Gaza. You criticize permanent occupation and new settlements. You criticize apartheid, and they go, anti-Semite. You're an anti-Semite, you hate all Jews. What? No, I'm against occupation, I'm against apartheid. Of course I don't hate all Jews, that's crazy. No, that's what you do, you hate all Jews. So, again, it's a trick. It's a trick to try to silence and shut down debate. They do it with BDS, too. Hillary Clinton did it with BDS. This anti-Semitic movement. Anti-Semitic? It's what worked in apartheid South Africa. You put, you do boycotts, divestments, and sanctions on a country to put economic pressure on them to try to get them to do the right thing and do a peace deal. That's the, a peaceful, non-violent way of getting a, a solution. No, nope, anti-Semitic. That's crazy, man. Well, here's Bernie Sanders making that exact point and making it in a concise way. He's saying, you could criticize President Trump and not be anti-American. Duh. Just because you're criticizing the President of the U.S. doesn't mean you're anti-American. You can criticize the government of Israel without being an anti-Semite. You can criticize Islamic extremism without being an anti-Muslim bigot. So he's right on all that. And then again, he gets to the heart of it, which is, look, I'm more pro-Israel because... I'm saying, end the occupation. You keep doing the occupation, all you're doing is putting Israelis in danger. There's going to be a backlash. Obviously, if you slap somebody in the face repeatedly, you take their land, you kill their civilians, that tends to, you know, lead to a backlash where they fight back against you. So Bernie comes along, and J Street comes along, and everybody who wants peace comes along and says, Hey, end the occupation. Stop doing that. Give them back their land. And they go, anti-Semite. What? No, not at all. So, Bernie's 100% right. You gotta end the occupation. You gotta get a peace deal. And it is, it is a, a move that is in favor of your allies to hold them accountable. I mean, when you support them no matter what, that's like, you know, you have a buddy who's uh, addicted to crocodile. The cheap-ass heroin knockoff cut with toxic chemicals that makes your flesh rot off. You have a buddy addicted to that, and you go, You know what, man? I'm not going to give you money because you're just going to go and buy crocodile with it. So no, you're not going to get the money. We're going to get you help. We're going to take you to rehab. And then they scream at you like, You hate me. I don't fucking hate you. I'm trying to save you. By the same token, you keep arming Israel. You keep giving them billions of dollars. You keep giving them weapons. And then they turn around and use them on civilians in the Palestinian territories. And then you say, All right, I'm going to cut it off. And they go, Oh, I guess you hate us. No, we actually like you. That's the point, is we're trying to stop you from doing these horrific acts. 
We're trying to make you abide by international law. It strengthens you for you to follow international law. It doesn't weaken you. So everybody should play by the same rules. Everybody should uh, embrace liberal values because I'm sick of that trick too. Netanyahu going and far right factions in Israel going, liberal values, Israel stands for liberal values, so therefore we get to do whatever we want. So in other words, we treat gays better here than they do in the surrounding Muslim nations. Therefore, look the other way when I massacre uh, children in Gaza. How about no? How about you want to really abide by liberal values? Great, treat gays well, treat women well, give everybody equal rights, but then also stop killing little Palestinian kids. That crazy idea. So you, you can't whitewash it. You can't say, we're better domestically, so we get to massacre Palestinians left and right. So, uh, Bernie's 100% right here. End the occupation, and it's the right thing to do. I mean, you can't sum it up any better than that.